Thanks for listening to our podcast. We have more information and related resources at probe.org slash podcast. If Jesus wasn't Messiah, it's probably too late to be looking for one. Michael Gleghorn examines the Messianic prophecies now on Probe. Biblical prophecy is a fascinating subject. It not only includes predictions of events which are still in the future, it also includes predictions of events that were future at the time the prophecy was given, but which now have been fulfilled and are part of the past. This latter category includes all the prophecies about a coming Messiah that Christians believe were accurately fulfilled in the life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus. If the Bible really does contain such prophecies, then we would seem to have evidence that's at least consistent with the divine inspiration of the Bible. One can see how an all-knowing God could accurately foretell the future, but it's not clear how a finite human being could do so. Thus, if there are accurately fulfilled prophecies in the Bible, then we have yet another reason to believe that the biblical worldview is true. Let's begin with a prophecy about the Messiah's birthplace. Messiah is a Hebrew term which simply means anointed one. When translated into Greek, the language of the New Testament, the term becomes Christ. Christians believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah promised in the Hebrew Scriptures. In Micah 5.2 we read, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. This prophecy was given in the 8th century B.C., more than 700 years before the birth of Jesus. Notice first that it refers to a future ruler who will come from the town of Bethlehem. When King Herod, shortly after Jesus' birth, asked the Jewish religious leaders where the Christ, or Messiah, was to be born, they told him that he was to be born in Bethlehem, and cited this verse from Micah as support. Both Matthew and Luke confirm that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, so he clearly meets this necessary qualification for being the promised Messiah. But that's not all. Micah also says that the origins of this ruler are from of old, from ancient times. How should we understand this? One commentator notes, the terms old and ancient times may denote great antiquity, as well as eternity in the strict sense. Dr. Alan Ross states, at the least this means that Messiah was pre-existent, at the most it means he is eternal. Micah's prophecy thus suggests that the Messiah will be a supernatural, perhaps even divine person. And this astonishing conclusion is precisely what Jesus claimed for himself. You've been listening to Probe with your host, Michael Gleghorn. Visit us online and get your free copy of Michael's transcript, The Prophecies of Messiah, at probe.org slash radio. And join us next time here on Probe. Christians believe that the Messianic prophecies in the Old Testament clearly point to Jesus. Yesterday we considered a prophecy about the Messiah's birth. Today we'll look at one that tells us when the Messiah would make his appearance. This prophecy is found in Daniel 9. Daniel was one of the Jewish captives who had been brought to Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. The prophecy in Daniel 9 was given in the 6th century B.C. While much can be said about this passage, we must focus on a few important points. To begin, verse 24 gives us the time parameters during which the prophecy will unfold. It reads, Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city, to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, and so on. Although we can't go into all the details, the seventy sevens concern seventy distinct seven-year periods of time, or a total of 490 years. Next, verse 25 tells us that from the issuing of a decree to rebuild Jerusalem until the coming of Messiah, there will be a total of 69 sevens, or 483 years. There are two views we must consider. The first holds that this decree was issued by the Persian ruler Artaxerxes to Ezra the priest in 457 B.C. Adding 483 years to this date brings us to 27 A.D., the year many scholars believe Jesus began his public ministry. The second view holds that the reference is to a later decree of Artaxerxes, issued on March 5, 444 B.C. Adding 483 years to this date takes us to 38 A.D., but according to this view, the years in question should be calculated according to a lunar calendar, consisting of 12 30-day months. If each of the 483 years consists of only 360 days, then we arrive at March 30, 33 A.D., 
Dr. Alan Ross says that this is the Monday of the Passion Week, the day of the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The views thus differ on the date of Jesus' death, but each can comfortably fit the evidence. Finally, verse 26 says that after the period of 69 sevens, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. According to one scholar, the word translated cut off is used of executing a criminal. All of this fits quite well with the crucifixion of Jesus. Indeed, the accuracy of this prophecy, written over 500 years before Jesus' birth, bears eloquent testimony to the divine inspiration and truth of the Bible.